Hello class! So in today's lesson we are going to learn how to solve 3x3 three three linear systems. I'm assuming that you already know how to solve 2x2 two two linear systems. This lesson is built on top of that. When I'm talking 2x2 two two linear systems I mean two equations, two variables. So today we're going to learn how to solve 3x3s three which are three equations, three variables. And I also want you to understand, just from a graphical standpoint, what does it mean? What does it look like? So let's start by looking at linear systems. We're going to start with a simple case, one variable. In this case, we represent that this equation uh, just by a single point on a number line. Now, as we move to two variables, we have two equations, and one equation is... Uh, represented by this blue line here, where all the points on the blue line here are you know, solve or satisfy this equation here. Uh, similarly, all the uh, points on the red line satisfy this other equation. So therefore, the place where they intersect, uh, the two lines intersect at a specific point where they solve both equations, and we call that our solution to the two-variable, two-equation system. Now, as we go to three equations, similar idea. Now, we have, say, this equation here. It's represented by a plane instead. All the points on the red plane satisfy this equation. There are an infinite number of points that satisfy this red equation, and so we have two other equations that are also represented by planes, and where the three planes intersect, that's our single solution that would satisfy all three of these equations simultaneously. Now, in the case of three planes, they don't always intersect in one point, and let's look at the cases here. In this case, they do. They intersect at only one place. There is one solution. In the next case, they intersect at a line, and therefore there are an infinite number of solutions. And then in these last three cases, uh, they don't intersect at any one common place. Now, these two planes, the green and the red plane, they do intersect on this line, but it's not, this line is not shared by this blue plane. So none of these cases here have any common intersecting points. Therefore, in all of these cases, there are, there are no solutions, no common points between all planes. And just let's take a moment to review with lines. When we had two, uh, two lines, we also had two cases. Say I have a case where I have two intersecting lines, I have a single solution here uh, where they intersect. But I could also have a parallel line, and in this case, there are no solutions between these two uh, uh, graphs here. There's no uh, common solution here, because they're parallel lines. Okay, now let's move on to solving 3 by 3s the main idea whenever we solve 3 by 3s is to reduce, get rid of one variable and to create a 2 by 2 system. Again, what I mean by 2 by 2 is two equations and only two unknowns. So I'm going to label my equations. I want to start off by that. We really need to be organized in our activity here, otherwise it's super easy to make a mistake. So organization is actually the key in solving these uh, these problems. Now I'm going to choose to look at elimination, and I'm going to decide which of these variables are easiest to eliminate. And it's a choice. There's no right or wrong. In this particular example, I'm going to show my plan to eliminate the z variable. Uh, and I'm going to do that by the following thing. I'm going to subtract equation 1 and equation 2, or equation 2 from equation 1 to eliminate the z here. And I'm also going to multiply equation uh, 2 by negative 2, and so that way it's going to also eliminate the z's right here as well. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, step 1, or step 2, I guess. I'm going to subtract E1 minus E2. 
So I, I just copied these two equations exactly down here again. And now I'm going to subtract. And I'm going to just negate everything in my second equation. And now I'm just going to add all the way down. So when I add all the way down, nicely and conveniently the z's cancel out itself and I'm left now with an x and a y without any z variable. I'm going to do the same with equations 2 and 3 um, or same idea I'm going to uh, in this case multiply equation 2 by negative 2 so let's do that uh, negative 2 times the entire thing negative 2 times 12 and just to highlight where this is all coming from, this is my equation 2. So after multiplication by 2, I get this. I'm going to copy down equation 3 as is from, you know, this right over here. And you notice that when I add now straight down all of my uh, uh, expressions, the negative 2 and the positive 2, they cancel out. So that was a strategic thing to eliminate uh, the z variable. So I add all these down and I get to this point but there's more simplification I can do here. I'm going to divide everything by negative 3 just to make um, my equations simpler. I, I could use this but it's going to be easier. Uh, the more simplification you do the easier your work is going to be. So now I'm left with two equations with two unknowns. Now my task is reduced to solving a 2 by 2. Again, I could choose to eliminate my x or eliminate my y. I just chose to eliminate my x's because I just add straight down and the x's disappear and I get y is equal to 3. Now I go back, I plug it into either one of these equations and I solve for x. And now I could take my x and my y, which I calculated, and plug it into any one of these three initial equations and I'm going to choose equation 3 just because I think it's a little easier because I have a, you know, x minus a y. These other cases I have x plus 2y, slightly more complicated. But I plug in my 2 and my 3 into the equation here and I solve for z. Not quite done yet because we want to check our work. We check our work by plugging our answer, which is 2, 3, and 5 back into each one of these equations, the original equations that we started with, and make sure that they equal 13, 12, and 9 respectively. They do, and now we're all done. There's a different way of doing this, and we call it substitution. The idea is exactly the same in terms of overall strategy. We want to reduce, we want to get rid of one of these variables and end up with a 2 by 2 system. So in this case, my plan will be, I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to use equation 3, solve for x, and then take that and substitute it into, the one, into both of the other two equations. Don't, don't solve for x here and plug it back into the same equation. Always use maybe one equation to solve for x and then plug that into the other two. Okay, so solving for x... I get x is equal to this, and now plug it that into equation 1. So let's see what I did there. I took um, this here, I plug it into the equation right there. Uh, equation 1 was this. I substitute x for this yellow expression here, and I simplify, and I get now this equation with two variables. I do the same thing with equation 2. I just copied this right over here. I'm going to again substitute uh, the x variable for this yellow expression here. And now I'm going to do more simplification. And I get this equation down here. Great. Now I have two equations, two unknowns. Now I can then go ahead and solve for uh, you know y and z. So again, I've named these equations. I, I named this new one equation 4. I named this new one equation 5. And now I'm going to choose to just subtract these two to, um, to solve for y. 
I find y is equal to 3, plug into one of these equations, find that z is equal to 5, plug you know, the y and the z back into any one of these equations up here, and I just chose equation 2, plug it in, I get x is equal to 2, and it's the same answer as I got in the previous page. Same system of equations, so I would expect the same answer. The point being, it doesn't matter whether you choose substitution as your strategy, whether you choose elimination as your strategy. It's really about determining what the easiest path is. There's no right or wrong in that. In this case, it was probably equally easy to do it one way or the other, but in a lot of other cases, elimination might work better than substitution, or vice versa. Okay, so here's um, a problem for you to do on your own. I'm not going to do it now. You can go ahead and do it on your own. But follow this plan where you eliminate y. And, uh, follow this plan that way we're all doing it consistently the same. So you can do it now or you can do it later uh, next time we meet. Let's look at some special cases, though. Um, there are some special cases, again, where we have infinite solutions or whether we, where we have no solutions. Let's see how that looks. System of three equations, I'm going to choose to eliminate my x's here. So to eliminate my x's, let's look at equation 1 and equation 3. I'm going to multiply equation 3 by negative 2 to get a negative 4 which matches up with this and will eliminate the x. So when I do this, when I eliminate my x's, actually I ended up eliminating my y's and my z's and I'm adding this down, I get negative 13 and I get a weird equation which says on one side 0 is equal to negative 13 which is certainly not true. So, because this is a false equation, this is a not a true statement, there are no solutions. It's one of these types of graphs. Um, we're not concerned, really, with which one of it it looks like, but we're just satisfied to know there are no solutions to this system here. So, whenever you get a false equation, there is no solution. Okay, the final case is when there are infinite solutions. So let's look what happens here and how we deal with it. So in this plan, um, I'm just going to arbitrarily eliminate my y's. It looks like it's going to be easy to do all the way down. So I'm going to add equation 1 and equation 2. And when I do that, the y's get eliminated and I get this equation x plus z is equal to 8. I'll label it equation 4. Now I'm going to continue on eliminating y again, and I'm going to take equations 2 and 3 to do that elimination, because that's kind of nice and conveniently laid out for me here. So as I do that elimination step, I get the same thing. I get x plus y, or z, is equal to 8, just like this. So I have two equations, uh, two unknowns, but they're exactly the same equation. So when I, let's actually do the elimination here. And I get this weird thing when I subtract these two equations. Um, 0 is equal to 0, which is always true. 0 is always equal to 0. And because of that, we actually have an infinite number of solutions. But let's not stop there. We're going to actually continue on from this point. I'm going to solve for z. z is equal to 8 minus x. I'm going to take this z value of z I'm going to plug it into this z right here. I'm going to substitute it in and then continue on and try to solve for y. So when I plug this in, x plus y is equal to 8 minus x equals 8. I, I simplify this and I find, at least in this case, not always, y is equal to 0. So that's true. y is equal to 0 x is equal to whatever, it's a ver we're going to just have a variable there, because we have infinite solutions. Um, x is uh, any number of, uh, of, of values, and z here, we found out earlier, there's a relationship between x and z. z is always going to be 8 minus x, so that's what we write here. This comprehends the solution set 
for these three equations here. Okay, so that's the lesson for today. Um, we'll discuss this more in class.